Hello everybody, welcome back. This is part two of making a Viking shipwright's broadaxe. So in this episode we're going to make the eye, make the drift for the eye, and weld it to the main body of the blade, and we're also going to profile it. So because this is a trimming axe, um, it needs to have a straight flat side, and that's because of your hewing beams to make them square you need the blade to get in there and for the eye to not be in the way of a straight edge. Especially if you're working a beam or a plank which is deeper or wider than the head of the axe itself. So on these the eye was actually offset to one side. The offset eye needs to have an offset drift, obviously. And the eye itself is a different construction to what I normally do. Uh, normally I will do two set downs and spread out the space in the middle. For this one I'm going to draw out the eye in one long, almost like a tongue, and I'm going to wrap that around itself and weld, weld it down. So this is the material which is going to become the drift. It's a uh, 40mm roundish. It's probably wrought iron. It's a big old lump of scrap I've had around for ages. So I cut the end off that and welded it to a rod to make it a bit easier to handle. So I'll just stick that in the fire and I will start tapering it. So make sure it's nice and clean first. I only want quite a smooth taper, it just needs to be tapered enough that it goes into the eye and then drifts it. So I'm working four sides and that will bring the narrow end of the taper almost to square. And as with every taper, I'm working the narrow end more than the rest of it. So basically just forging up towards the fat end, giving more blows to the narrow end. So once it's to the thickness I want at the narrow end, I will flatten off the corners, which will give me eight faces. And each of these eight faces wants to be at the same width as all the other faces. A lot of the time people won't make the corner faces as wide as the main faces. Uh, that is actually a mistake, because you don't end up with something round then. So once you have eight faces, you will then turn it into 16 faces which as everybody knows who's watched my videos for a while is known as a 16 facer gun and then when you have 16 faces just spin it under the hammer to make it round at that stage once it's round I will start beveling it and I want it to be an asymmetrical bevel so longer on one side than on the other and round off Keep rounding off the corners. You don't want any any square or sharp corners. So with all that done, chop it off the main bar with a chisel or an angle grinder or whatever you've got to hand, and I'll just drop it in the Bosch. So with that done, I gave it a quick buzz with the linisher, which I didn't actually record because the battery was dying on my camera, so I had to be quite selective with the shots that I filmed. So once it had been linished, I got a piece of wire and wrapped it around the mandrel and that gives me the external diameter of the mandrel and I did that at the widest point of the mandrel obviously I measured that, that comes up to 5 inches which means that we need the, uh, the, parent, the parent material for the eye to be 5 inches long plus twice the thickness of the material, we'll get to that in a minute so I'm making this out of 30mm round wrought iron and I centre dot it at three and a half inches from the end, fully expecting it to stretch out to five and a half inches. So I will do the set down on the centre dot. And the reason we are doing it at five inches plus twice the thickness of the material is because if we don't add twice the thickness of the material, then the outside of the eye will be five inches long, which means that the eye itself will be thinner than we need it to be. So if you add twice the thickness of the material, that means that the inside 
measurement of the eye is five inches, if that makes sense. So using the cross pin, I will spread out the eye material to uh, five and a quarter inches, I think it was. And once it is at that width, I will then start drawing it out to the five inches length using the cross pin. Because uh, it goes a bit quicker. And once it's drawn out to the correct length, I will start squaring everything up, getting out, getting rid of the cross beam marks, etc. So obviously you want this to be longer than the five and a half inches. Uh, it can be six, seven, eight inches long if you want. So I will now mark off the length of what will be the eye and I need to take into account that set down as well because obviously that becomes a part of the eye which I nearly forgot to do. So the set down is about half inch deep which means that I will mark up the length of material at five inches and that will give me the five and a half inches I need. So beyond that five and a half inches I will do a double set down on the material and this is the section which will be welded which on the original shipwright's axe which I am copying uh, is a feature because the eye itself is wider than the throat of the axe and I will take a heat to just square up the end of that bit and I will scarf it down in order to create a welding plane and that will allow me to blend in that weld quite well obviously if you just have a flat end and you're trying to do a faggot weld it's just going to gobble into the material that you're welding it to so the taper will actually help that weld nicely so I will then turn over the bar and heat up the rounded bit and I will start flattening and squaring that up and put a slight taper on it as well, that'll save a bit of time later. And I want this to be roughly half inch, three quarters of an inch thick and about an inch, inch and an eighth wide. So with that done, I will roll over the eye. And having done this, uh, like with most of my videos, this is an experiment. Uh, I think it would have helped if I'd gone in with a fuller uh, in order to round off that eye a bit more and create a, create a bit more of a lip on the side that's going to be welded, if you can manage to picture that. So I might try that for the production models that I'll eventually get round to doing. So now it's time to weld it. So I will stick that in the fire with the main with the eye sticking out of the fire and the main bar in the fire. Spin it round a few times. The thicker part will need longer, obviously, to heat up. And weld it. So this is wrought iron. So I'm running a neutral fire, a nice big molehill fire. You don't need any flux. Wrought iron is self-fluxing. And with a neutral fire it's not going to burn anyway. Have a look at my scarf welding video for a longer chat about that and I'll take two or three heats to make sure that's nicely welded and isn't going to come apart so this is my interpretation of the archaeology by the way uh, I had a look at images and drawings of Viking shipwrights axes uh, and this seems to be the way that a few of them were made, so, so I'm giving it a go. So with it all welded, I will blend in the edges and get that neck down to about inch and an eighth by half inch, three quarters of an inch thick. And I actually cut it down at uh, two and a half inches from the eye. I wish I had done it at maybe three inches, three and a half inches. That would have given me a bit more material for welding, so that's a note for later. But there we go. So here it is. At this stage, I will form the neck down to a broad taper, not to a point because I still need to chisel cut into it. So I'm using the cross beam for this and I will square up the end and that'll give a nice landing pad for the chisel to cut into. Get rid of any cross beam marks as well. It's easy to, easier to do it at this stage. And I will head over to the leg vise, 
clamp it in nice and tight. And I will split off a lug either side. That's the first time I'm trying this. Uh, it's a theory I've had a little for a little while. I uh, don't know if anybody else does it or if it's a technique which is present on the archaeology. I've not spotted it anywhere. But I have a theory that I can get a stronger weld and a better blended weld by laying those two tabs on the flat of the axe. After that I'll just chisel cut into the rest like I normally do. So I will then draw out these tabs to create a scarf. Again creating a welding plane rather than a shearing plane. I'll do that on all four tabs. And here we go, here's the eye ready to be mounted. So at this stage I'll take the blade, which is the result of last week's video, and I have marked up on the drawing where the eye sits. And I'll just centre dot that mark to make it easy to find. Now, I can't actually show you the drawing because I don't have copyright for it, but I will stick a link to its online location so you can have a look if you pop down to the description. And using the centre dot I will just put a little scarf on there. It'll make it a bit easier to weld and a bit easier to seat. Not particularly wide, just the width of that chisel cut on the eye. And I will assemble the two. So if I'd made those tabs on the eye a little bit longer, which I will do for the next one that I make, I'd have found it a little bit easier to seat it. And I think I should have also done some little notches on the blade itself, like I do when I'm edge welding. Uh, so that's a note for next time if you guys are going to have a go at making one of these. Bear that in mind. So I will bury the transition on the T-weld and weld it carefully so they don't fall apart before they can be welded. I'm just using that first heat just to tack them together. And then I think I used maybe three or four heats to um, get the whole thing welded. Now the tabs didn't quite blend in as well as I wanted but I learnt enough from making this prototype to make another one that would be a lot better welded. Well, it's not badly welded. Don't get me wrong, I'm still going to be able to use this. It's just that it's not perfect. So again, welding fluxlessly. Being careful not to burn the edge that I lay welded onto the blade. So, with it all welded, I'll give it a big old scrub. Get rid of all the muck out of the fire. So, if you're using a gas forge, you probably won't get it quite so dirty. But it's something that you have to keep an eye on when using solid fuel. And I will just give it a straighten. So at this stage it doesn't need to be perfect perfect because we're still going to be working on it, we're still going to drift out the eye and everything. But it helps if you keep an eye on the straightness. Saves time later on. So that's the blank. And it is starting to look like the old illuminations. So you can see what I mean about the tabs not quite being blended in as well as I'd have liked. But you can see that there is quite a nice transition on the neck. So the tabs are, I think, a good idea and I will take that idea a bit further. See where I get. So next I will get the eye hot. And I will use a different drift to the one that we made and just get drift the eye open wide enough that the special drift will fit in there. Like so. I will just use that to shape the eye. Now I'm not forging down onto the drift. It's only mild steel slash wrought iron, whatever it is. 
so it will deform if you hit on it too hard or get it too hot. So I'm literally using to coax the eye into shape. So a lot of people use high carbon steel drifts. The way I make my axes and eyed tools, uh, I weld them up. And so the drift is only shaping the eye rather than being used for forging the eye, if you see what I mean. So there we go. So I will again give it a bit of a scrub and just make sure that that cutting edge is flat and straight. Just generally make sure that the eye itself is straight and the blade rather. So this is for cutting straight planks and beams, not for cutting bowls. It doesn't need to be flat. So, having annealed it, I will head over to the linisher. I will grind the edge flat. And I will take off that end bit. Polish up the backside. Grind bevels onto it, rough bevels. I'm still leaving it about 2mm thick in order to heat treat it. Uh, do a spot of profiling, and here we go. This is the blank, ready for heat treating and handling. So, it's looking, looking like the right thing. Uh, the eye's on, it's on quite solid. Might throw it about a bit, see if it falls off, but it won't. Uh, that weld could have done a, been done a bit better on the eye. I did splash a bit of acid on it, uh, in order to re reveal the transition from the carbon steel to the wrought iron. Got a nice pattern there, I might consider etching the whole thing. Well, there we go. So, thanks for watching. Check out my stuff on Etsy. Uh, if you enjoy these videos, please consider donating on Patreon. Here's a list of my current Patreon donors. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, you're all wonderful, wonderful people, and it does help out quite a lot. Uh, and I will see you on the next one.